is in your hands my life is in your hands you took control when i was young when i was not able my life is in Welcome to my show called Inspired Blessings with Jean Marie Prince. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And my guest is Matthew Sin. Uh, and he's been, uh, this is my, your second time now for uh, being on my show. Thank you so much. And Matthew Sin has a healing ministry. He's from Indianapolis. And um, you actually just said Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven Thursday night, actually Wednesday and Thursday night. Yeah. Right. So you go traveling all over the world as well as uh, mostly in, in the United States, that you like to go around to the different places that uh, would let, you know, have you come and to be able to heal the people that are looking to be healed. Yeah, well, I don't heal. Right. However, God, God does you. heal, flow through me, and touch people that way. Mm -hmm. Just uh, to kind of refamiliarize people with you, because uh, if they didn't hear, you know, watch your, fir your first interview, how did you actually become and you know start a healing ministry? Well, like I said before, uh, just a long story quick. In college, wanted to be an attorney, but then my desire shifted. Started wanting to touch people's lives, wanted to see people healed, and then all of a sudden, my direction went that way. Here, ended up getting a degree. In church ministries pastoral counseling started being around people with healing ministries next thing I know I'm praying for people they're getting healed all right but we got to back up okay talk about your faith first okay in the fact that you you're, you're born you're raised Jewish born Jewish so yeah. that is a Jewish God, person um, becoming my father yes is a Jewish doctor my mother ended up in him, got divorced. She married my stepfather, who is a Pentecostal. Very interesting. So now I've got a Jewish father and a Pentecostal mother. Mm -hmm. My mother ends up getting custody of me. And so I'm raised under her and then go to church, went in with my dad, Sometimes we go to synagogue, but I still honor the Jewish heritage. And so even though I am charismatic in the Pentecostal, I still embrace my Jewish traditions, Hanukkah, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, those kind of things. Right. But if I remember from our, uh, the first interview, something to the effect that, that uh, you and your friend were talking about healing in, in a restaurant or something, and people around you started to feel? Yeah, it happened quite a bit. At one particular time, a friend of mine in college, we were in a bank, and he and I, I was filling out a slip, and we were just talking about the power of God, what God can do, and these ladies just interrupted us, and we thought, what, what are you, what's going on here? And they said, as you two guys were talking about healing and God the arthritis in our hands left mm -hmm. and we thought wow what weird is out about that is we didn't even pray for him so we knew that just by talking about him just by talking about God and what he can do it caused his presence to manifest did you think that you guys had such a, a faith, such a conviction that you would have been able to do that, to have such a manifestation of uh, no. God around? No. But what we did was we just talked about it everywhere we went. So we just loved him so much. And we were so much into healing, into faith, into the gifts of the Spirit, just into what God can do. But we just were so immature, you know, in college. We just didn't know what we were doing. But one thing we had was passion. Mm -hmm. One thing we had was passion. We may not known what we were doing, but we had the passion 
to just continue to talk about it. So people were getting healed in gas stations. People were getting healed in grocery stores. We were praying for the sick. The pizza guy was getting healed. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what we were doing, but we were going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and so how long ago was that? That was in college. Right. That was where if we made a mistake, it didn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what made you say to yourself, okay, now that I'm out of college, I, I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to, you know, have a healing ministry. What made you really make that distinction? Well, Psalms 37.4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. That word delight means make yourself pliable. And so as I was pliable, it says he will give you the desires, which he will give you desires. Mm -hmm. So he started giving me desires. So as I got out of college, as I graduated and got out of college, he gave me desires to want to go and touch people's lives this way, mm -hmm. to see people healed of cancer, to see people healed of arthritis to stop hurting mm -hmm. because I know what it's like to be in pain I know what it's like to hurt and I know what it's like and so when he shifted my desires to not want to be a lawyer but to see that person that's crying that's hurting every day all night long he pushed my desires and then I had movement to go that direction he seemed to have given you compassion for others. Oh, Be absolutely. Because you can't do this because without Because as compassion. a lawyer, because on the other hand, with a lawyer, it's like the compassion to make money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's the total opposite, which has been a blessing for many. Because yeah. many have been healed through your ministry, through the faith, you know, of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, now, I actually uh, went Thursday night to Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven and you were speaking there and you kind of gave a, um, a little, um, you shared. And I th and a couple of things was, one was the, uh, the Proverbs 13, 12. I was looking up, I know you, you, the one verse was based the message one. It was out of the message, message Bible. So Proverbs 13, 12, say, and so in the message Bible, let's say, is that it's unrelenting disappointments leaves you heart sick but a sudden good break can turn your life turn life around yeah and so you spoke about that so if you can share more of, of explaining that well I think that Kinda you can understand this that yeah. every one of us have experienced setbacks or disappointments I have for one have experienced disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. An unrelenting disappointment is where a disappointment just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. It just keeps coming to where you just don't feel like it's ever going to stop. But the rest of that scripture says, but a sudden. Mm hmm a sudden, sudden break. good break can change your life so what I was trying to tell the people was yes you may be in your 40s you may be in your 50s and you've got that look on you because all you experienced is unrelenting disappointments mm -hmm. but that sudden good break all it takes is one will turn your life around. Right, right. And right now, we're in the days of the suddenlies. Right, right. And towards the end times, how God is going to give more, you know, yeah. spiritual gift to, to people, and especially probably more towards the healing, so they could see the miracles. And, I, and people that are sitting there are looking at you saying, wow, Matthew, through the power of Jesus Christ, is that you're actually going to be that sudden good break so my life you know by healing me then that you can turn my life around right and, and I'm sure many people could say yes Matthew has you know through of course the power of God has been able to do that through the, your healing ministry 
Now, also, there was another thing that you shared, which I thought was very interesting. It was a true story you shared, and it was called, it was the artist painting, Check Me. Yeah. So, explain that. Well, there is a, a painting that an artist painted. The title of the painting is Checkmate. It's a true story. And the painting, it was in a museum in, uh, I believe, France. Um, and it was up on the wall. And the painting depicts Satan as this ugly monster. And he's got this real proud look on his face. And he's playing against a human who is supposed to be a Christian. And Satan, as this big monster, has this look on his face of victory, like prideful, I've got you. And this Christian, this human, they've got him all scared and defeated looking. Mm -hmm. And the title is Checkmate. And it's, it, it's on the wall of this museum. And, and so one day, according to the story, a true story, there was uh, a world-class um, chess player. He was a champion. He was walking through, he loved to tour museums, and he was going through a museum that day, and he saw the painting titled Checkmate. And he looked at it, and he stood there for a few minutes, and he asked the curator, can you bring me a table, chairs, a chessboard, please? And he had him bring him the chair, table, and chessboard, and he took the, the, the chess board and he took the, piece, the pieces and he placed the chess pieces on the board just as it was on the painting. And he stared at it for six hours. And people were looking and gathering around looking at him saying, what is this guy doing? Six hours. Right. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he screams, looking at this Christian in the painting, saying, as he's, talk, look, as he's talking to him, he says, wait, you have not lost. You have not lost. You have one more move. Right. You have one more move. Mm -hmm. The guy that painted the picture painted it wrong. That the Christian in the painting literally had one more move and he would have won. Oh. So they took the painting off the wall because the guy that painted it painted it wrong. That the Christian didn't even realize that he had one more move. And what I was trying to say is that in our lives that the devil, the enemy, in many of our lives, even in a situation, couple in my life, he has got us to believe that he's got us in checkmate. But I had to tell the people, and I will say this to anybody that's watching, that God always has one more move. And here's my thought. When the devil saw Jesus Christ on the cross, crucified, wounded, he and bruised, thought, he, he thought, thought it was checkmate. checkmate. And God, Three days Jesus later, had one more move. He had one more move. That he was going to rise from the but dead. But he has one more move in every situation. Mm -hmm. Your house may be foreclosure, be in foreclosure. God has one more move. The doctors tell you, we can't do anything for you. God has one more move. Mm -hmm. Your marriage is about to break up. God has one more move. God always has one more move move. I was found two days old in a bathroom in Korea. God had one more move. Somebody found me, brought me to an and orphanage. And look at you now. And you know, and right? look at you now. Right? So it's, it's amazing. Doing what you're doing. Yeah. Because he had one more move. Right. So it's just, just amazing what God has really done. Um, but I just thought that that was really good, uh, you know, that you were sharing that before the healing. Now, uh, what happens is um, you have the different people that are coming up to you and you pray for them and things like that. 
And then there was this other one gentleman in particular. Um, he went up there, and he, not the not the second guy, but the first guy, because he was actually friends with the second guy. And and in which he had pain. He had pain in walking and things like that. And how he felt such a difference. You know, he felt the fact that you had it, how it helped him and healed him. You know, through. I know it's not you, Matthew, but I'm going to say that. But we know that it's Jesus Christ. Right. Okay. And basically is, is the fact that he felt such a difference. And that move, okay, made the next guy, which was his friend, come up to be prayed for. And he was explaining how he kind of like walks with a limp. He had like used to wear a lift, but he decided not to wear a lift anymore, but he was getting pains and so on. So you had prayed for him. And then you told him to, to walk, you know, back and forth. And you said to him, are you feeling any different? And he said to you, no, I'm not. So then he explains to you, at that point, then he explains to you, actually, he didn't tell you that at that point that he um, had one leg shorter than the other. But then now he does tell you, you know, that he has one leg shorter than the other, how he used to wear lifts and things like that, and, um, and how it's caused pain. So. Instead of you giving up, you had one more move, all right? You decide to get two chairs. So you have him sit on the chair. You have his wife on the one side, knowing that it was at Samantha's little bit of heaven, knowing that she is the one who is the overseer. You wanted to get her to come up to see this, you know, this healing. And I know you had mentioned the night before to me that you had uh, actually uh, helped somebody with the fact, heal somebody through the fact that of, of their, one of their limbs also um, grew. So you have him lay on the chair and you have the wife position his legs the way it should be because we know that normally your feet would touch like this if it was even, if your legs were even but one was shorter than the other. So it kind of went like this, and that's how it was positioned. And everybody saw it. Okay, right? so I was sitting over there, and I said, mm-mm, I'm getting a better view. If I'm gonna talk about this, I wanna see it for, for real. So I moved over, and I'm sitting right there that I can see both legs as, as uh, 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 let's say, the book. That's how close I was, okay, to being able to see this, because I wanted to see it for myself. Right. Sometimes I guess I could still be a little bit pessimistic because sometimes you have people that say, oh, yeah, God's giving me the power to heal, but then you see the fact that they have, you know, right. they don't. Anyway, so what's happening is that his feet, you know, his sneakers are like this, so they're not even. You take the leg, okay, and the leg is actually the right leg that you're taking. And you're saying, I command... I command uh, this leg to grow. What was the actual word that you used? I command. I know, I, I just, I know the I word command was command. you to you, grow in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And so he had jeans on. And so what was happening is that you, you say it and it just, and then you said, I command it, your, your leg to grow. I command it for your leg to grow. And it actually ended up becoming even. Okay, so I was like, wow, that was really cool, <laughs> you know, to be able to see that. And so you said to the wife, you said, what do you see? And, you, and she said that it's even, right? And, and I'm hoping the fact that it was actually videotaped so that if, if it's clear enough for people to see that I'm actually going to try to see if I can actually get the clip, they're going, um, you know, to put on this show so they'll be able to see the actual healing. Um, so anyway, so Samantha is also witnessing this. So you tell the guy to get up and you say to him, okay, I want you to get up and I want you to walk. So he walks this way and then he walks back this way and you said to him, so what do you feel? He goes, wow, it's leveled. That's what his words were, it's leveled because he knows that you know, it was, you know, his legs were always unleveled and that he would have this limp and you could tell as he's walking that he doesn't have that limp. So people were very amazed. And actually, um, I had interviewed him on my cell phone outside because I just wanted to give it to some, I was hoping to, for somebody to hear it so they can really, right. say, not my words, that it's from them. Mm -hmm. So he had shared that the reason why he went up was because of the fact that his friend who just became a believer a couple months ago was in pain because they were up somewhere, was in pain 
and he had the, the, the faith to go up to you and to be prayed over and that he felt that he was healed. So that gave him the faith to get up there, okay? And um, so I just thought that that was amazing that um, you actually do uh, grow limbs, you know, for people t and, and, you know, in, in, in what you are able to do. So what did you, th what, did, what was your uh, feeling? What's my feeling? Because actually, you were very excited when it happened. You were, you know, like jumping, like, wow. I'm excited you know? for him. Yes. Um, what do I feel? I feel that that should be a norm. Right. right. That we get, I don't want people to get me wrong. We should be excited. But the problem is that that doesn't happen enough. Right. This is what I've learned as I'm going, you know, getting closer to, to learning God's Word and, and things like that, and especially listening to Andrew Womack. I always kind of used to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be done, you know, as fast as I possibly could. Never really took it for serious. But now I understand, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in, is heaven. in heaven. His words that's in the Bible, yeah. okay, are real are true, they, they manifest, that they actually, because he wants you to, I always used to say, being in a physical body, in a physical world, it's unfair for us to be the fact that we're supposed to be spiritual. Yeah. I always felt that that was an unfair thing of God's request, okay? Because how are we supposed to be spiritual when we're tempted with all the things and all the, you know, of the physical world as well? But what I've realized is that God wants us to have the spiritual blessings now on earth, here, you know, that we would have the power to heal, we would have the power to have more of an abundant life and, um, and to live just like his, his word and in the fact that we could have it now instead of waiting till we die and, yeah. uh, and go to heaven. Yeah. Because that his words, you know, are really powerful. Double-edged, you know, two-edged sword. Absolutely. Right? That means you could divide into joint and marrow. Absolutely. So, you know, the fact that I've learned that when Jesus died, it was finished. It's already been done. That's what I am trying to tell them. It's already been done. All they have to do is receive what he did 2,000 years ago. We're still trying to work it up. If I pray more, if I do this, maybe if I fast for three more days, maybe if I pray for two more hours, then maybe I'll get this and they're trying to create something in their flesh that's already been provided mm -hmm. in the atonement on the cross. Right, right. So that's what I'm saying is, is that I'm just glad that God has actually been opening my eyes more to understand that because now I could say God isn't being unfair. God is being gracious. The fact that he wants to give us the abundant blessings that's in heaven on earth while we're in the physical as physical beings so we can be able to stop you know and and not to be tempted because God gives us the strength to be able to not be to you know tempted or the fact that um, you know to know that we can command to be healed you know so all the different things yeah. that comes with the abundant blessings yeah. the spiritual yeah which absolutely I, which I find I also then um, this other lady that went up to you and uh, pink sweater sweatshirt and she was just so so grateful to you for healing um, her upper part of her body because she had like scoliosis she had where her, uh, I don't know if it was an accident or what but her body her her body shifted like three three inches you know that she had this problem where she couldn't breathe you know what I'm talking about she couldn't breathe and she didn't have a blood flow but she's saying Matthew, you know, I just, she had to come back up and say, I just have to tell, to tell you just what I'm feeling right now is the fact that somehow I could feel my body shifted an inch in the right direction, that it now actually opened up the airwaves, that I can breathe better, that I feel now oxygen is literally going into my, into my brain that's giving me a little bit more clarity than I've had before. And so I, again, I interviewed her outside on my cell phone, too bad I can't get it, but she was like so grateful for the fact that, and, and I said to her, I said, you know, and, oh, and with her, I don't know if you know the story, she was 
because I remember she was actually to the right of me. She kept on jumping up, but you, you were kind of looking at the people to the left. You weren't looking at the people to the right, you know what I'm saying? So you kept on missing when she would ju jump up and say, no, I need, I'm, I'm here. Anyway, so what happened was she was kind of getting discouraged, okay? And she's like, you know, she was getting disappointed because she's gone to other healing ministries and she didn't get healed. She's like, I don't know why I'm here. I'm just, you know, I, I'm, I'm finished. I'm done. So she, she kind of like, kind of, kind of, whether or not she's thinking to herself or saying that to God, she goes to grab her pocketbook and she's getting up now to walk out. And the next thing you say, is there anybody here that has a, a pain in their wrist? And the next thing she was like, that's me. So she goes up and then you prayed for her. And that's, and, but she, she was saying how she was done, ready to give up. She's gone to other healing ministry services and they've done nothing for her and how she was just gonna quit. But God had stopped her by you saying, does anybody have a pain in the wrist? And, he, and she said, it took something small, well, it's not small, but it took something small for you to then help her further. And so she was, yeah, she, she was so she, joyous. It was she was touched from top to bottom. Right, right, she definitely was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want people to be able to know how they can be able to get in contact with you to come to the, their church organizations to do a healing service. So how would they do that? Uh, they would just contact me by Facebook. Um, also, I have a Facebook regular page, Facebook ministry page, or my email, matthewsin at hotmail.com. And I feel I just need to clarify, it's not Matthew Sin, it's S-E-N-N. -N, yes, S-E-N-N, S -E -N -N, matthewsin at hotmail.com. Um, but Facebook, Facebook me. It's Matthew Sin, but I also have Matthew Sin Ministries on Facebook. Okay, uh, 30 seconds. What would you like to say to the viewers? If you could look into camera three. Camera three, God wants you well. God wants you healed. We all are going through disappointments. I'm dealing with many disappointments. I'm dealing with setbacks and disappointments in my life. But I know that my sudden good break is right around the corner. Don't give up. You've had setbacks. Don't take a step back because we're going to have a huge comeback. We're all in this thing together. I just pray that anybody out there that is sick, I pray in the name of Jesus that you are healed that your body is well. Don't give up. Just remember that your sudden good break is right around the corner and it will change your life. Thank you so much, Matthew. I appreciate thank it. Thank you being for a having guest. me. No problem. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. Again, I do speaking engagements, so if your church organization would love for me to share my testimony, I would love to do that. Also, if you could like my Facebook um, Inspired Blessings page so you can learn when Matthew's uh, show will air. Oh, actually, you're watching it right now because the fact that it aired, but my other shows. But I just want to thank you again for joining us and keep Inspired Blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others lost for words. Thank you and God bless www.jeanmarieprince.com To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible.